And I'm proud to be on the internet doing Jupiter at night. And I won't forget the audience and that we're presented live. So I'll read the chat room as they type and include it as we go. For there ain't no doubt I love this show. God bless Jupiter. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Yo there, J-Man. Yo there, Chris Man. You know, tonight's episode is, uh, it's two things for us. One, it's sort of like uh, putting back on your comfortable old robe, because we're back home now. Mm-hmm. We were out all weekend. Yeah, when we had to tear this place apart. Yeah, we literally <laughs> just put the studio back together before <laughs> this episode, but more about that later tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also uh, a more serious topic than we normally cover, but... Um, you know, it's also sort of a unique opportunity for Jupiter at night to take a different look at this whole thing. It's kind of a historic event, too. I mean, you probably, everybody in the world has probably heard Osama bin Laden is reportedly dead. Mm-hmm. Well, tonight, we're not going to cover the news. We're not going to get all CNN all up in your faces because it's boring and it's not our way. And they do that. Instead, we're going to try to take kind of a, a fun, geeky approach to it. We're going to cover some of the technology that they use to yeah. actually execute the mission. That is some of the gadgets, and that's kind of an interesting We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, how they actually spread the news once it was out because we're mm. a, a little neat you know modern times cool technology things about that and we're going to talk most of the episode about how the internet reacted yeah and that's the part i think is was um, maybe uniquely fascinating because uh we've throughout the history have had these huge historical moments in the country it doesn't matter what country but you mm-hmm. know going back to uh you know united, the united states things like um uh, the kennedy assassination assassination even at it when 9 11 happened the mm-hmm. internet didn't really have this interconnected hyper social backbone where, right. where we really were so crazily connected. And so what yeah. the internet's become really good at is compiling and organizing some of the best conspiracy theories <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. Thanks Reddit. Right. Yeah. And you got to give a tip of the hat to Reddit. We've got a, we've got the link in the show note here, but I got to tell you, I've been following this uh, Reddit uh, conspiracy uh, subreddit all day and some really interesting stuff in here. Now, of course it's, it's the conspiracy theory thread mm-hmm. for a reason. It's, yeah. But there's sometimes some interesting things that are asked. And I'll, I'll be up. quite honest. You know, I don't usually give a lot of credence to conspiracy theories. I think that usually what we're told should be, if it's not the truth, it's what should be the truth. I know that makes me kind of a buy in to mass media and stuff like that. I'm kind of a sellout. I don't know way, if I, I don't know if anyway, I mean, what I'm saying is some of this stuff is really fun to read. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, let me cover some of the stuff yeah, that some might have some credence to it. And it's kind of interesting At to least think about if, if not, nothing else uh, you got, there's some common, threads that we've picked up in some of these conspiracies. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the concerns is over the body itself. You know, they were uh, concerned that there was no ID by outside non-U.S. forces. Right. Also, there was there's a whole thread in Reddit about the the amount of fuel that the helicopters could hold and the amount of time that it would have taken them yeah. to get from the mission mission location yeah. to where they dropped the body. But, you to, know, some of these, as some of these have developed, just like for that one, for example, as more information has come out during the day, some of the holes have been filled that make these uh, some of these theories uh, less realistic. Right. But, uh, anyways, yeah, the, well, and you know, importantly, the Pakistani government was not brought in on this whole thing, right? But there has since been a news uh, conference saying there were reasons for that. We believe that the that maybe not Al Qaeda, but other terrorist cells have infiltrated the yeah, Pakistani and government. Might they might have leaked out the information which, which is if they an were interesting told. Thing, yeah. Now, one of the neat things, though, is that this uh, this whole mission was uh, reportedly pulled off by a top secret Navy SEALs special oh, ops yeah. team called the, the A-Team. team No, no, Team, team six. six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the A-Team. That's a different show. Uh, team Six, boy, it's interesting because uh, these, these. Uh, in fact, I'll do a quick Google. They're basically on. total badasses from They're what like, I'm hearing. Uh, well, they've been called everything from um, literally back when Bush was in office, they were considered uh, Cheney's uh, hit squad is what they mm-hmm. were labeled often as. Mm-hmm. And now they've been, cons- they've been considered the executive um, execution branch. And things like that, but this uh, Navy uh, Navy SEALs six team um, is is really a fascinating group of like supermen that are, are under this direct orders of the president and things like that. It's part of this joint. Coalition. You know they're going to make a movie. It's really interesting. They're going to make a Team Six movie now. You, you got to figure that uh, some of these guys in this Navy SEALs ops are probably going to be asking for that twenty five million dollar reward. 
Yeah, I would. Isn't it twenty seven? It's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can you can do some search online to find out information about them. It's extremely interesting. Uh, like it's almost like something right out of the movies. It's, it really is. It's fascinating. Uh, one of the other things that was uh, has been kicked around as a common um, conspiracy is that he's already been dead for, for like almost a decade. Yeah. Yeah, um, and there's some the people have theories on that. Uh, yeah, there's actually an article that somebody in a chat room linked earlier. It said an inside source says that he's been on ice. Yeah, they've been like holding his body for some reason. You know, that's like, rough to that's rough to believe. Uh, they, and they have some compelling reasons actually. But mm-hmm. the reason I find it kind of rough to believe is uh, as more stories develop and these reporters are making their way down there now, they're interviewing you know people that are in the area and things are starting to add up. You said like nurses that had gone to deliver medicine and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and, and were turned away when they questioned about SUVs and also yeah. there was people there that looked like uh, they were providing uh, maintenance on dialysis equipment and uh, so Osama was known to have kidney issues and mm-hmm. things like that. But one of the interesting aspects now shifting the gears into the technology side of things is uh, as part of this raid, they actually got quite a bit of uh, computer data and things I like that. I think one of the CIA folks has been called it uh, a mother load of intelligence. Yeah. But the problem is, is that uh, there's a really well-known uh, type of encryption software that's very widely used throughout the Middle East called, uh, I don't remember the name, it's but it's hard to pronounce AES-256 type encryption, yeah. which... They say using current processors and everything would take longer than the age of the universe to decrypt yeah, if you if don't know the key. If he's using that. Now, uh, the uh, U.S. government has already released a statement saying they have literally hundreds of people working on this. Um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you got to figure... Uh, Who knows what they could find in there. Though. Or what they'd have access to already. Right. But uh, they're saying that even if 10% of the information they recover is somewhat actionable, that would be considered one of you know the most significant intelligence finds they've had. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, whole, the whole tech of uh, how they actually got to Osama is is fascinating. Well, and kind of like, der. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they found him because they tapped one of his second-in-command's phones, his, his courier, his they courier, call him. Yeah. yeah, and um, what I found really compelling about that is, A, they didn't just tap his phone. It sounds like they heard his name mentioned over a series of calls that they've been monitoring. Yeah. From... Halfway across the world. And then narrowed it down to his phone. Yeah. Because they didn't like know his number or anything right. like that. And then we're able to track him to on one of his runs. Kind of sounds like that cell phone system that Batman had, really, in Dark Knight. Yeah, seriously, where he's like, right? Tapped into everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of like one of those things that's like it's just casually mentioned and you're like, whoa, okay. I mean, and I then they, they location tracked him and then tracked his phone while it was turned off to follow him back to the compound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. One of the other things that's kind of geeky, it's not really tech, but you almost kind of have to look at it and it's sort of a, like a, wow, this is, people take this so seriously. They, and it's it's a, fo- a form of geek in itself is uh, they actually rebuilt a, what's considered a fairly accurate mock-up of his entire ca- compound. Like life-size, wasn't it? Yeah, a so full life-size. So they could run-op tests since, inside Since it. early April, they've been running these tests in this compound. and um, That would be like the best first-person shooter ever. I mean, think about that. <laughs> I mean, right? It's pretty impressive that they... And, and I, I'd be curious but to know... But they should totally release that as a, con- uh, a Counter-Strike map. I'd be curious to know what tech they use to get interior uh, dimensions mm-hmm. and things like that. I've heard that sometimes they can use types of radar and LIDAR to get that information. But I'd wow. like to know how that's done. I would too. Um, now, is there... Uh, do you want to talk anything... Well, like, I know there's some tech well, regarding the DNA. Well, yeah, they'd say that that's how that they identified him was because they actually had uh, DNA samples from his half-sister, I think it was, who died here stateside several years ago cancer. from cancer. Yeah. And so they had kept samples so that they had a family a close family member's DNA yeah and I, I guess it says here too that they also did things like um, uh, they also did um, some other analysis like fingertips and fingertips. And I think yeah. retinal scans were involved but as well so I think about the kind of long term planning there like tracking down that sister and then seizing that body and mm-hmm. just well and I think she had died like five or six years ago so they've yeah. been holding the DNA since then to, yeah. to try and use it as yeah. a, a method to verify his his identity because let, just like Saddam Hussein used to use doubles reportedly Osama used doubles as well so if he was ever right. targeted he could have a clone that could be thrown out into the right front of the gun <laughs> you know one of the links that we'll uh, leave for you in the show notes uh, actually this, these show notes are full of, of, of fantastic links especially uh, the ones we're going to get to in just a little bit but one link we're going to skip over just because it's kind of visual heavy and we don't want to um, penalize you audio listeners out there is mm-hmm. uh, uh, PC Magazine did a did a write up on uh, how the overall internet reacted to uh, this all this news, yeah. and it's sort of like you know the old school method of looking at all of the newspaper front pages from a big event. This mm-hmm. is the front pages of websites. Yep. Um, well, the Daily is is not exactly a website, but you know, the Wall Street Journal, all the other really big online media sites. 
uh, what their front page looked like. Yeah. What a news. I mean, I'm, I guess in my mind, I just always picture the newspaper. It's going to be really interesting if that particular story can stick around for like a decade or so and we can look back on it mm. later on in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's to see that, how it changes. That's one of the things that I'm really interested about this whole event is we're in a new age of hyper connectivity yeah. and internet technology. Uh, everything that we do technically these days could potentially be around. Oh yeah, it forever. Is. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, the the potential is there. I don't, who knows if we might move on if, from this if media. If the archive dot org has its way, yeah, right. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to be able to look back on some of this thing and some of this stuff in a, in a in a at a future time. Not only like. Your kids, yeah. when they're in high school, might be assigned to go find some of this stuff on the and internet. And it's just, it's, it's not just like uh, historians that have filled out uh, online Wikipedia articles. And no, it's, like that, a, but it's, it's the actual living content. Yeah, it's, it's Twitter. Yeah. It's blog posts. Well, let's talk a little bit about Twitter because uh, Twitter did play kind of a significant role in all of this. Uh, of course, the White House, uh, via Barack Obama's account, uh, did announce the whole thing. And, yeah. and Jay man did you catch the thing there? I did. What is it, Jay man It's his 1337th post. It's his, it's it's his, his lead latest tweet. tweet. <laughs> it's his lead tweet that, uh, <laughs> about him about to go uh, live to the nation. The other thing yep. is, uh, not to jump too far ahead. Do you think but, they planned that out? You think they just... No. They've been waiting to do it until he had I, his 1337th? Uh, that would be awesome. Like two months ago, they were like, well, we're ready to launch, but we're if, not up to the tweet count yet. If the, if the people in that <laughs> high up in our government were actually that aware, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be scared and, and really happy. But uh, no, I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, no. I, I, I think one of the other things that's kind of funny to mention about Twitter is uh, how significant it is that uh, the, the uh, sorry about that, the entire actual uh, event of the raid on o- Osama's compound was actually accidentally live tweeted by a guy that was just living there. Some uh, American born IT pro that was living there trying in, to get away from it all in about a bad Pakistan. And he was just typing away, doing something on his computer. And he said, wow, I'm hearing helicopters overhead. Yeah. And he kind of just sort of documented the whole thing as it happened. And uh, then, of course, at the end, he's like, oh, crap. Now I'm that guy that accidentally didn't accidentally live tweeted the uh, yeah, uh, uh, whatever it was he said. <laughs> but I mean, just I, I, I just amazing that it, everything that happens around this world mm-hmm. now is, is is making its way into that whole nervous system. You know, talking about Twitter and to a different extent, Facebook as well. I wanted to actually come out and, and tell some of you that might not know oh. uh, debunk a myth that's going around on the internet right now is there's a, a, a pretty well-known or becoming well-known Martin Luther King quote that's actually completely bogus. It's, there's no truth to it at all. It's that first link right up there under proliferation. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. But it's uh, just some person on Facebook um, put up the quote. Well, it's like, and it was, it was like their own words. Quote? Oh, okay. It was their own words. And then they a- appended a Martin Luther King quote to the end of it. But people are attributing the beginning part that was this person's own words to Martin Luther King. So there's that, and then there's also a Mark Twain quote. You know, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I guess the first sentence, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives, but I will not rejoice in the death of one, not even an enemy. That is, yeah, that, that's the part that is the, the actual person's quote. The rest of it is actually Martin Luther King, but I don't everybody's going around. I, but and, I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, that is one thing that, you know, we should mention is that we are talking about the death of a person. Yeah, yeah. A, a bad that's person. True. A very bad person. Yeah, and I but, actually totally agree with it, and that's probably one of the reasons that this quote has become so prolific. But so it says, uh, he says, uh, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives, but I will not rejoice in the death of one, not even an enemy. Returning hate. Yeah, it's a good hate, quote. Multiple hates, adding deeper darkness and night already divided of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Mm-hmm. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great quote. And I think that latter half is Martin Luther King. But there's also a Twain quote out there, something about, I've never wished anybody dead, but I've read a lot of, uh, what are they called? Mm. Um obituaries with oh, glee or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, obituaries with glee, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't want to, you know, I just, I, that's one thing to consider, but you know, you guys got to, probably one of the major things we sort of sunk in with us just researching the crap out of this, and boy, did we. I mean, we followed this story all day long with mm-hmm. fascination, and I got to say, checks for sources on everything. Oh, absolutely. There's so much stuff out there that is claiming one thing and not citing sources. And, and if they don't cite, especially sources, if you go to Reddit, <laughs> <laughs> if they don't cite sources, you have no reason to trust them. If, if what yeah. they're saying is 100% accurate, then it, it costs them nothing to link you to a source. Yeah. So uh, be sure, just, just be sure to filter what you watch. Um, but it's been fascinating. I know as we go and the J man here has got a lot of the internet's funniness in the in the show note links. Yeah. Um, any one of these in particular you want to make sure I show? Well, there's the a link. Uh, I, I encourage you to take, check it out. If you're not a fan, if you don't watch late night television shows, you know, they do those monologues up front. Mm-hmm. Many of them were hilarious. They were And bad. there's a collection of some of the greatest hits in an article that's in there at the end. But you, we can just load up any of those okay. that you want because every one of these are, 
are the, like my best of. We've yeah, got the, pics and tweets and quotes from. Oh man, how about let's before we uh, before we talk about some of the funny ones. How about this funny picture that made online? All these people on Twitter they said, "Who's Osama bin Laden?" That's the state of our teenage youth to, uh, in America. Yeah, so that links in the show notes. But uh, <laughs> there's a lot of funny ones in here that uh, I think that. Gave me a chuckle. Like, there was one that said, uh, sorry, I was late with the, uh, do you know which one that is? Sorry, I was late with my birth certificate, but I was busy killing Oh, that's Osama. up here under the the uh, the fact that, we didn't mention it earlier, but oh. the announcement of that Osama bin Laden had been killed. Oh, oh yeah, That right. it preempted the end of Celebrity Apprentice. Right. It's just kind of an extra little finger to Don Trump over the whole birth certificate. You think it was? Hoopla. I don't know. It, probably not on purpose, but... Or it maybe, happened. Or maybe totally on purpose. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I, see, the internet's always got the funny. And it, 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 regardless of where you sit on the issue, I think it's still kind of a funny. Sorry it took so long to get you a copy of my birth certificate. I was too busy killing Osama bin Laden. It's <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> With him wearing shades yeah. and being all cool. Being totally cool. Uh, I, just so yeah. check out our show notes. If Tons you want a few stuff. good chuckles, I, I've assembled the ones that I think are the best. And it, Now. It's uh, that I think is one of the funniest things about watching this whole thing unfold. And actually, yeah. I got to be totally honest. The internet's, the internet's humor of it. The jokes are what got me interested in the issues because, like, okay, one of the common jokes is that Osama shouldn't have uh, enabled location tracking on his tweets. That that's how they found him, or he shouldn't have but used then, his real address on the PSN. Network. But then that led me to learning about the fact that they actually did track his courier through the location tracking or through a tap phone. Yeah. So it's kind of it kind of just snowballed in. I guess on it kind of did lighten me up to the whole news thing too, because at yeah. first I kind of put my barriers up and said, ah, this is you know not something I want to take in. But but when the internet gets funny about it, yeah, it kind of helps. It breaks yeah. down barriers. So maybe we helped a little bit tonight. <laughs> if we did, let us know. Uh, we mentioned earlier that we tore down the studio. It was sure did. We went to Linux Fest this weekend, and it was a lot of fun. And we've been releasing some clips throughout uh, the weekend, and we'll be releasing some more throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there was the already there was uh, we did a Linux action show on location. And there was an, also a separate Ubuntu review. Yep, the new Ubuntu release is out, and we put our typical. Mm -hmm. We did a typical review, but this time we we're just going to make it a whole episode. Yeah, like a whole video. Once we did that, and then there's also going to be um, Brian did a talk on why Linux sucks. That'll be coming out. I think Whoa. we're going to also publish his uh, Illumination software. Illumination software. Yeah. Thing and maybe some other yeah and we tidbits. got yeah so those will be coming out uh, throughout the week probably the best place to catch those is youtube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting mm -hmm. and uh, also I just want to give a quick mention um, this is Tuesday night that we're recording this but on Mondays now our new show Tech Snap which is a, a show that is done by myself and uh, Alan and uh, not Alan from Jupiter at night right. but a different Alan with two L's who's uh, also a long time a much time smarter Alan oh. let's be honest <laughs> well he's much he's a much geekier Alan he's a long time IT veteran like myself and we just go crazy geeky on a lot of tech topics <laughs> we've been really digging into some interesting Dropbox stories if you're a Dropbox yeah. user Dropbox and security user. On, on a number of things or lack of security thereof yeah, yeah, so yeah. check out Tech Snap if you're interested in some of that stuff mm -hmm. and then tomorrow night uh Heather is joining us again with another uh, space episode. This time, we're going to look at some of the technology that's out there that's been inspired by NASA's either funding or, you know, you always hear like, that was something that was invented to go up into space and now yeah. we have it like Velcro and stuff like that. Right. We're going to do an episode all about that kind of stuff tomorrow that night. That sounds like fun. Yeah, that'll be our Wednesday episode. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday, we've got something really, really epic planned. And if that doesn't work out, our backup plan... Is actually also quite epic. Yes, it is. So we're we're pretty excited about Thursday too because we've it's got either two really, yeah. really epic yeah. or kind of epic. But still, yeah, <laughs> still totally okay. I mean, it's going to be fun either way. So we're really yeah. excited about the entire week of Jupiter Night, and uh, we enjoy. We invite you to join us live while we shoot it over at jblive.tv at eight p.m. Pacific. You can join the chat room and hang out. Oh, my chat room shot's not up. That's what that is because we tore it apart. Right. <laughs> you can join the chat room and uh, they can uh, give us uh, like backgrounds and things like that. It's tons yeah. of fun to hang out with those guys. Mm -hmm. Well, and they've been having a lively discussion here about yeah. whether or not it was good to celebrate the death of someone. And right. Uh, that's just one of the thousands of topics that keep rolling past. Yep. So, so yeah, it, it, this is lively. It would be awesome if I could show that to you. It would be. I'll do that for the next episode. <laughs> All right, Promise? everyone. Yeah. I'll, well, I'll go fix it right now. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for joining us in tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.